Have you started the recording? Yes, thank you. Yes. Oh. Yes, thank you. So, a uh, very good evening. Welcome you all. All on behalf of the Department of Oceanography Technology University of West Bengal for the second part of this beautiful seminar series. So uh, apologies for my delay. I'm uh, experiencing a lag in the connection, and uh, we will be uh, resuming with this. And today we have with us uh, uh, Dr. Pallavi Datta. So she is going to talk about startups in artificial fish tank culture. But uh, before we listen to her, so let us uh, listen to our beloved uh, guide and mentor. Uh, Professor Dr. Abhijit Mitra, sir, who is here. Sir, please enlighten us with uh, some kind words from your end. Uh, so, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Yes, sir, loud and clear. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, good evening to all of you. Today is the second day, and after the completing the first day, uh, which was a very successful one, today uh, Dr. Pallavi Datta will be speaking on the on on the on the method of developing the fish culture as one of the alternative livelihood. Rather, I will tell that one of the livelihood which is very important nowadays in the COVID situation to improve your uh, nutrition, to improve, uh, improve your health immunity. And also, uh, this is also very important uh, to earn some livelihood in this, in this scenario. When, uh, when, the, uh, when, the, when the whole world is actually sinking down in terms of economics and finance. So uh, today she will be describing all about the technologies uh, on which she has gained expertise. But I will tell that uh, there are certain innovative things which you have to think nowadays. For example, uh, if you just uh, if you just talk of about the water quality management, it is very very important thing. And for water quality management, you have to first think that how to detoxify the water because fish cannot survive in toxic environment. So you have to know the technology, how to detoxify the water, not only in terms of upgrading the oxygen level, but also in terms of upgrading the, uh, the, the phytoplankton level, also in terms of uh, diminishing the uh, microbial growth. And for uh, microbial growth, uh, you, can, you, can, uh, uh, you can easily see that we have the, uh, this type of lamp. This is very, very important. This is the UV lamp, which can uh, kill all the microbes the, the cell wall of the uh, bacteria, uh, which is uh, actually, you know, that they are made up of cellulose. And uh, this cell wall can be easily broken down with the help of this UV lamp, which is very, very important nowadays. And this type of technology is very, very important for tank culture. And uh, therefore, I will suggest, and, and therefore, I will suggest that. Uh, And therefore, I will suggest that uh, 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 that this type of technology should be. High. One thing is that uh, when you go, there should be a proper inlet, there should be a proper outlet. Otherwise, the uh, entire toxic matter will will be uh, concentrated within the tank. That is not good for the uh, FCR feed conversion ratio or the uh, or the health of the fish. Time throughout the time, even in the new bioflux system, alerta is a mandatory because if you just close or if the power goes off, the alerta supply goes off, then there is a there is a huge loss of uh, loss for the entrepreneurs. So all these things will come into the uh, future lecture. I wish. Uh, this seminar and every success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, uh, for those wise words. And, Helena, uh, madam, is there? We are yes. also joined here. Yes, madam. We are also joined by uh, Professor Helena Sengupta, madam, and uh, uh, introduced her. She is the HOD from the Department of Civil Engineering, Technology University. West Bengal and the Chief Advisor of the Industry Relations and Placement. So, uh, Madam, if you will please uh, say something to the audience gathered today. Uh, thank you, Saurav. 
On behalf of IIC Techno India University, I wish a very good evening to all the panelists, the organizers, and all those who have joined today's session. IIC TIU has always encouraged the budding entrepreneurs with various platforms and organized various sessions in the benefit of the students and the faculties. Fish farming is a form of aquaculture and the act of fish farming is about raising fish commercially in tanks or enclosures for human consumption. Today's topic has been organized to encourage the aspiring entrepreneurs and give them a fair understanding about the startups in artificial fish culture. I'm sure you would get lots of insights from Dr. Pallavi Datta about the same and without taking any further time, I welcome you all to attend the session. Thank you so much. Culture. Thank you, Madam, uh, for enlightening us about uh, fish culture. Uh, I would now like to request all the panelists to please switch on your uh, camera so that it can be taken. So all the panelists, please, if you may. All the panelists are requested to switch on their videos, please, just for the short. Yes. Do we have uh, Dr. Prasenjit Prabhani? Can you please return your video? Okay, I think there's some problem with this connection. Uh, it's okay. Uh, thank you so much, all the panelists. So uh, now we will delve into the topic of the day. But before that, I'll give a brief description about uh, the details about uh, Dr. Pallavi Datta. So uh, she has completed her BSc honors in zoology in the year 2005 from the University of Calcutta. And uh, she is an MSc in zoology in, in 2007 from University of Calcutta. And she has completed a PhD in the year 2021 from Technical University. And the title of her thesis was Ecology and Scope of Monosex Tilapia Culture in West Bengal. And uh, she is working as a faculty member of Charuchandra College from 2009 in the Department of Zoology under the University of Calcutta. And she has worked as a research scholar in the Department of Ethnography as she was working on monosex tilapia in natural and artificial environments. So this is going to be a very interesting topic. Uh, Dr. Pallavi Datta, over to you, madam. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Shora, for your for my introduction in a very wonderful way. And uh, good evening all, good evening all the fac teachers, faculty members, my guide, Dr. Vitit Vitro, Dr. Sophia Zaman, and all the faculty members of the Indian University. Pallavi, you are muted. Uh, yeah, I guess. Have I, am I audible, ma'am? I was not muted. Okay. Now you're now you're audible. You okay, okay. I think that's a connection lag. Some now I'm audible, ma'am. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes madam. Okay, so I'm again repeating. I am Dr. Pallavi Datta from yes. Charuchandra College, and I am now, really I feel okay. Carry yeah. on. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Hello, can, I, can everyone yes, listen to You're me? You're audible. You're audible, madam. Please, please can carry I, can on. Can I proceed? You're audible. Yes, audible. Just, I think you can uh, switch off your video if the connectivity issues are there. Network issues. Okay, you can switch off the videos. And you share your screen. Just, yes. Uh, yes, I will share my screen. And uh, am I audible clearly now? Yes, now you're clear. Yes. Okay. I will start now. With your permission, ma'am? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, all the faculty members present here, my teachers, Dr. Sufia Zaman and Dr. Obhijit Pit, the participants here. I am going to present my topic, which is a very interesting one. That is artificial uh, fish culture in artificial tanks. Without much delay, I am going to my presentation.
Uh, can everyone see my screen? Uh, yes, uh, yes please uh, give it to the uh, slide mode. Yes. Yes, I'm, I am I am I am doing that. Yes. Is it okay, ma'am? Absolutely. Yes, visible? now okay. Okay, it's clear, clear. Yes, yes, please carry on. Okay, ma'am, if there is any sort of connectivity issue, if there is any sort of lagging, please in, uh, stop me and inform me. Okay, sure. Because okay. I can't see anything here in the I can't see the icons. So please, it's a request. Okay, carry on. Yes. So okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, so this is my uh, topic of today that is startups in the artificial fish tank culture. Now, to do with the fish tank culture, I must say one thing that the human being is practicing aquaculture for about 4000 years ago. And uh, aquaculture can be divided into two main parts. That is one is the capture fishery, another one is the culture fishery. Capture fishery in open water like that of sea, ocean, river, ponds and culture fishery where they are particularly the farmers are culturing them it's like a cultivation where they can easily control all the parameters and everything so culture system and capture system these are the two system and here we will specify on the culture fishery now we know that due to shortage of land there is definitely there is shortage of land and uh, digging big big ponds is a really big tough so it's a new innovative techniques have been developed in recent time that is culturing fish in tanks, which is definitely we can grow it in the uh, in a very suitable way. We don't need a lot of space and this and that. So this is my focus of my topic today and I'm coming one by one. So this is my uh, introduction and this is the contents. So first of all, I'm coming to the tank culture definition. What is actual definition of tank culture? Now, tank culture we can define as a culture of fish in artificial environments like tanks. It can be made of steel, reinforced cement, fiber, or plastic. It is an intensive method of fish farming where the tanks we can set up in any domestic or industrial areas. Now, tanks allows the fish farmers to handle the fishes efficiently and manage the environmental parameters like dissolved oxygen, pH, water temperature, and waste more efficiently. And the main thing is that we can do it with the vision in mind that we are doing it for better yield of fish within a short period of time. That's one of the big objective of this tank culture. Now, these are the merits of the tank culture. Uh, obviously, each and every system has their own merits and demerits. So there are definitely some merits of tank culture, like uh, tanks are widely used in aquaculture because ponds take relatively large land area compared to tank system. Then high fish density in tanks disrupts breeding behavior and allows male and female fish to be grown together to marketable size. Whereas in ponds, mixed sex population breeds so much that parents and offspring compete for food and become stunted. Now tanks allow the fish culturists to easily manage stocks and control the, the environmental parameters like water temperature, DO, pH, waste, and, and that can be adjusted for maximum yield. Feeding and harvesting operations require much less time and labor compared to ponds. Now, small tank volumes make it practical and economical to treat diseases with therapeutic chemicals dissolved in culture water. And uh, obviously, the final point is intensive tank culture gives a very good yield on the small parcels of land. Now, there are certain demerits. One demerit is, first demerit is that the feed cost is high as the fishes are provided with good amount of feed. So definitely there is a cost for the feed. The setup, the setup, entire system setup is absolutely quite costly. Like the pumping water, you have to set one pump, then aeration machine that increases the establishment cost. Some filtration technology like recirculating systems, I will come to that in the later part of my slide. They are complex, they are expensive. And uh, the, to handle this type of system, a good uh, labor, uh, expertise labor is required and the constant monitoring is also very much important for that. Now, leaching of chemicals from plastic tanks and fiber tanks. Hello, hello your, um... Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I can hear. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Is there any problem? No, okay, now, okay, now, and um, uh, now you're okay. Now okay. you're okay. Please. Yes, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. 
No, madam, you're audible. You're absolutely audible. Okay, actually, Saurav, I can't see anything. I can't see only the screen. So, it's I am audible. Yes, yes, you're audible. Okay. Are the yes, are madam, the yes, are the words Please getting into the cut? No, I don't think so. Madam, we can see your slide and we can also hear you. Okay. Okay. May I? I, I will proceed then. Please, madam, please. So where I was there in the leaching of chemicals, so plastic tanks and fiberglass tanks, there can be leaching of chemicals, which can lead to the contamination of the fishes we are culturing there. In wooden tank, also, there is a chance of corrosion because of the low self life of the wood. Now, the culture fishes are very easy prey to the birds if we culture them in an open area. So they need to be covered with a net, but definitely if we cover them with a net, the oxygen content becomes really sometimes disrupted. Now, all the culture system, they relies on continuous aeration and water pumping. So if there is any sort of mechanical failure or specifically if there is electrical failure, then there will be huge fish mortality. And there is always a risk for that. So definitely all the tank culture system which work in a very large scale, they should be provided with an electrical backup. And that is definitely possible. Now, confinement of fish in tanks at high densities creates a stressful condition. Should be at, uh, we can't hear you. This is Now, discharges. Hello? Dr. Pali, from uh, time to time, your voice is cracking. Yes. Yes, yes. You, switch, uh, you have switched off your video, no? Yes, I have switched off my video, ma'am, but uh, it's connected. My net is connected. Okay, okay. Please carry okay, on. What to do? Please carry on. Okay. I don't know, ma'am, what to do. Yes, I am repeating on. this. Uh, yes, I am repeating yes, yes, it yes. again. The demand part, I am repeating it okay, again. Okay, okay. It's very okay. unfortunate that. Yes, ma'am. So I am repeating again that the demerits of the culture, tank culture system. Uh, where I was, that is the culture fishes are easy prey to the birds. The, if the tanks are in an in a open space, then there will be predation from the birds. And we have to cover the tanks with net. But that is also very difficult because uh, it will decrease the DO. And hence, uh, these things should be taken care of. Now, any tank culture system, it relies on continuous aeration and water pumping. So definitely, if there is any mechanical or electrical failure, there will be a lot of fish mortality. So in all the systems, there should be the good system of backup, that is electrical backup, so that there is no power cut and definitely we can control the fish mortality. Now, as in a tank, there are high densities of fishes cultured together. So stressful condition definitely prevails and outbreak of disease is a very big problem there. So that should be taken into consideration and repeated cleaning of the water should be done so that this type of things can be prevented. Now, discharges from flow through systems may pollute the receiving waters entering the pond and that the we have to control the heavy metal contamination into these tanks also. We have to take care of it. So this part is audible, I suppose, Saurav? Yes, yes, you're audible now, clear now. Okay, okay ma'am. Uh, now I coming to the different types of tank designs, the materials and shapes and etc. Now tanks can be made of different materials like wood, concrete, plastic, fiberglass, metal, glass. Wooden tank is cheap, lightweight, but the interior of the tank should be painted with non-toxic material to prevent leaching in water. 
waterproof liners should be used concrete tanks are very much used but uh, they are used when uh, there is a construction of a large tank or when there is a need for large tanks concrete are used cements are used uh, but obviously they are uh, there is a problem that they are not portable it takes a huge setup to build up the tank and etc and obviously the tank is uh, the setup is little expensive so very uh, utilizing uh, thought is that that we can use plastic tanks and a lot of the people are using like plastic tanks made up of polypropylene polyethylene polybutylene pvc acrylics and vinyl tarsan tanks are also used nowadays instead of plastic because there is very less le uh, leaching of the uh, or the mixing of the contaminants from this tank now these are the advantages of the tanks uh, i mean the plastic tanks it is lightweight it is portable repairs are easier can be made in various shapes and sizes most of them are non toxic fiberglass tank we can also use like it is lightweight it is strong durable inert it can withstand the effects of the uv rays now the different types of shapes of the particular tank now first of all the circular tanks commonly used for nursery and grow out purposes they have better hydraulic characteristics the self cleaning action and oxygen distribution of circular tank they hold specific advantages the velocity circulation of water causes better mixing of oxygen food distribution uniform water quality and definitely higher stopping density now another type of tank we can use that is square or rectangular tank they are is in uh, that they provide this uh, advantages that is they are efficient use of space then contribute to savings on construction cost but there is one disadvantage that in the corners of this type of tanks accumulation of waste can be done, uh, is there, uh, takes place and definitely the hydraulics or the flow pattern of water that should be very much in uh, you know you should, that should be monitored properly now oval tank are now the use which has the combination of advantages of both the tank that is the circular tanks and the rectangular tanks because a circular tank provides with efficient water use and self cleaning action and the rectangular tank provides with the space efficiency okay now uh, the drainage system in a fish tank definitely there is an inlet pipe and an outlet pipe the drainage system in fish tank is dependent on the structure of tank also because adapting tank design depends on the behavior <clears throat> sorry swimming activity of the fish and they should move properly within the tank that that should also be seen now uh, an adequate tank design should provide uniformity of rearing condition fast elimination of biosolids that is non ingested feed and fishes and uniform distribution of fish throughout the tank now another important condition is to ensure that the velocity of water is should be uh, controlled for the uniform distribution of oxygen now tank hydrodynamics is thus an important aspect to govern the efficiency of resource and water use and is determined by the inlet and water inlet and outlet configuration of the tank and the degree of fish swimming activity two types of tank geometry are actually uh, practiced one is the circular tank another one is a rectangular tank now in rectangular tanks the water generally flows from the upper to the lower end of the rectangular tank and the minimum waste concentration is found in the area around the water inlet and maximum at the outlet now there are gradients of environmental conditions are there which lead to the heterogeneous fish distribution now in circular tanks also it is very useful because water is usually injected tangentially to the wall which creates a rotating flow inside and provides highly uniform water quality due to effective mixing pattern because in circular tank the mixing of water is very good rather than rectangular at all and the water outlet is placed at the bottom center of the tank which produces self cleaning properties because a circular flow pattern rapidly flushes bio solids to the central outlet <laughs> just a moment okay 
my laptop got a little bit hanged. Uh, can everyone see the next slide? Am I visible and audible both? Hello? Yes, yes, you're visible as well as uh, audible. So this is the next slide, the requirement of fish tank setup. Can this, uh, is this slide visible? I think it is visible. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay. yes visible, visible. Okay, ma'am, thank you. And now filters are very essential components of fish tank because to maintain the good water quality and am I audible, ma'am? Am I audible? Carry on. Yes, you're audible, audible. Okay. Carry on. Okay. Yes. And uh, they help in maintaining the water parameters required for the healthy fish growth. Now, compared to fish living in their natural habitat, fish lives in tank, with a, they live in a very compact way with a high density. So live fish continuously produce waste in the form of ammonia and nitrates. And if the concentration of ammonia and nitrate are high, it can cause fish mortality. That's why it is advisable to use different types of filters like mechanical, biological, chemical filters so that the water is clean and the fish survives. Now, mechanical filters, among the mechanical filters, foam and polyester floss are used, which effectively blocks the passage of solid materials like uneaten food, fish waste, uh, uh, which gets collected in the filtration system. But the mechanical filters should be cleaned regularly because if there is clogging, then the filtration procedure will be disrupted. Now, biological filtration is achieved by passing water over a medium rich in beneficial bacteria, which converts ammonia and nitrates into less dangerous nitrates. And another important point for biological filtration is that, that oxygen, one vital component is oxygen. Because the beneficial bacteria are aerobic, the biological filtration can only be achieved if the surrounding water is rich in oxygen. So it is important to make sure that the filter media has a good flow of water so that if the filter media becomes clogged with debris during the time, then it can create an anaerobic environment and obviously it can definitely make the beneficial bacteria less useful. Now, chemical filtration is achieved by passing water through the activated carbon or zeolite, which extract dissolved waste and compounds. Now, activated carbon uh, removes the chlorine and the chloramine. Just a moment. and uh, dissolved proteins and bad order, and zeolite removes the ammonia from the water. Now, this, this is a very recent phenomenon, a very beautiful innovative technique that is recirculatory aquaculture system. Because as far we have seen that when, you are, when we are doing a fish culture in a tank, the quality of water is absolutely the most determining factor. So recirculatory aquaculture system is a very beautiful system where the water is being recycled because we cannot waste water. Each and every time we cannot change water and we cannot waste water because there is shortage of water also. So let's see, the main objective is to reuse the water, to filter the water and again, reusing the water for that particular aquaculture. Now, let's come to the recirculatory aquaculture system. It is a water recycling and reuse technology which eliminates suspended matter and metabolites through mechanical and biological filtration. And this technique is obviously used for high density fish culture. <clears throat> uh, this can be, this fish culture is, main, is an obviously an intensive uh, fish culture. And this is done in indoor tanks, preferably indoor tanks. And here the recycling water is back to the fish culture tanks, recirculating system, filter and clean it. In the next slide, I will show the uh, procedure. 
Now, this is uh, definitely applied to any aquaculture species. New water is added to the tanks to compensate for splash out, evaporation, and wastewater flushing. The reconditioned water circulates through the system. Just a moment. And no more than 10% of the system's total water volume is replaced daily. Now, the next slide. So these are the advantages of using rash. This is the flow chart. Let me show you the flow chart of rash or recirculating aquaculture system. So this is the circular tank where the fish are cultured. They are passed through this type of filtration things, filtration uh, media, and they are disinfected. Then they are pH is controlled, fine particles removed, then they are oxygenated, and then they again they are recirculated back to the circular tank. So coming to the advantages of rash. Now the equipment and other tanks have been predicted to last for a long time. If we do the setup once, then it will definitely, uh, it will, uh, we can do that for a long time. Antibiotics and therapeutics are used less frequently, greater chance of obtaining high quality fish. Direct operational costs linked with feed, predator control and parasite will be decreased to some extent. Majority of the rash are the in indoors, so they are definitely there will be predator control. Potentially eliminate parasites in recipients' water. Risk reduction, that is disease parasitic impact, they are, we can control that. The risk is reduced. Then risk production can promote flexibility in terms of location for farming, proximity to market. Allows for the production of diverse variety of species regardless of temperature need. Feed management is much improved. Uh, feeding can be closely monitored for 24 hours. Stock stress can be reduced, like bad weather, adverse temperature condition, external pollution, predation. These things we can control and definitely we can get a better yield. Then enable secure production of non-endemic species. Then judicial use of water and land areas can be done. Definitely there are certain disadvantages, but the number of disadvantages is very less than the advantages are more. That's why people are more into this system. Uh, there are certain disadvantages like uh, they need a constant uninterrupted power supply because if electric power fails, then there will be a huge mortality of the fishes. So backup of electricity is definitely required. Capital cost, establishment cost is definitely high because the system is it's a complex system. It requires a very good expert labor to handle this system and uh, definitely the cost is really high. But as we have seen the advantages, this is definitely a, so this is definitely aquaculture technique we can uh, go, go through. Now, next, bioflock system of fish farming, very innovative way. Here, the fecal matters are converted into the feed of the fish, which is absolutely, there is no need of water exchange a lot. There is this water exchange thing is absolutely very uh, tedious. And so it is an innovative and cost-effective technology that is bioflock system has come. Toxic materials to the fish and nitrate, nitrite, ammonia, they are converted into useful product that is proteinaceous feed. Now it, it is in this technology with limited or zero water exchange under high stocking density, strong aeration and biota formed by the bioflock. And obviously, the bioflock culture is productive in case we are exposed to sun. Now, bioflock system is a wastewater treatment which has gained very vital importance. The principle of this technique is the generation of nitrogen cycle by maintaining the higher carbon nitrogen ratio to stimulating the heterotrophic microbial growth. Actually, nitrogen cycle is being initiated in this particular bioflock and which is converting into a proteinaceous feed for the cultured species. Now, which assimilates the nitrogen as pest that can be exploited by the cultured species as a feed. The bioflock technology is not only effective in treating the waste, but also grants nutrition to the aquatic animal. Now, how can we obtain that? This higher C by N or carbon nitrogen ratio is maintained through the addition of carbohydrates, so molasses, and the water quality is improved through production of high quality single cell microbial protein. In such cases, dense microorganisms develop and function both as bioreactor controlling water quality and protein food source. 
Now, immobilization of toxic nitrogen species occurs more rapidly in bioflocks because the growth rate and microbial production per unit substrate of heterotrophs are 10 times greater than that of autotrophic nitrifying bacteria. So this technology is also based on the principle of flocculation within the system. <clears throat> Now, biofloc is a heterogeneous aggregate of uh, suspended particles and variety of microorganisms associated with extracellular polymeric substances. It is composed of microorganisms such as bacteria, algae, fungi, invertebrates, and detritus. It is a protein-rich live feed formed as a result of conversion of unused feed and excreta into a natural food in a culture system on exposure to sunlight. Each flock is held together in a loose matrix of mucus that that is secreted by bacteria and bound by filamentous microbes or electrostatic attraction. Large flocks can be seen, but most of them are microscopic. So flock size range from 50 to 200 microns. Now this is the flow chart of the bioflock system where we can see the flow chart that is a lifelong tank ecosystem which provides 25 to 50% protein, 0.5 to 15% of fat, and definitely they are good source of vitamins and minerals, and definitely they are a very good source of uh, fish farming nowadays. Now, benefits of the bioculture system. This is an eco-friendly culture system. It reduces the environmental impact, improves land and water use efficiency. The point which I mentioned that is limited or zero water exchange. We can uh, have a control on the water waste and investing of the water. Now, higher productivity as it enhances survival rate, growth performance, feed conversion in the culture system of the fish, higher biosecurity, reduces water pollution and introduction and spread of pathogens, cost-effective feed production, Utilize, utilization of uh, reduces the utilization of protein rich feed and cost of standard feed. Uh, reduces the pressure on capture fisheries, that is, use of cheaper food fish and trash fish for fish feed formulation. Definitely, there are disadvantages like uh, increased energy requirement for mixing and aeration. You need a constant supply of aeration. All the what I mentioned that power failure and uh, uh, the mechanical failure can be that very much uh, devastation, devastating for this type of system because a constant watch should be kept, a constant aeration, aerator machine should be constantly operating all through the day and night because that if it suddenly stops, it will create a huge fish mortality and a huge economic loss. So these things are very important. That is, monitoring is very important in the agriculture system. Now, reduced, but the main point is that we will get a huge amount of profit also. So, for that, we have to be very much cautious and very much attentive in, on, uh, in these uh, things. Now, startup period required, alkalinity supplementation required, increased pollution potential from nitrate accumulation, inconsistent seasonal performance of sunlight ecosystem. These are the certain disadvantages of bioflock system. But definitely what I already mentioned that these systems have more benefits than disadvantages. So obviously they are much more practiced nowadays. Now uh, I will come to my topic. This is my very, uh, uh, this is a very uh, good thing we have done. Uh, that is we have done the tilapia culture in the rooftop tank of Techno India University, uh, West Bengal. And where we have built this tank with the tank has an eight feet to nine by 10 feet uh, uh, yeah, structure and depth of three feet to four feet. And we have almost uh, three to uh, 9,000 liter water in that. And we have, uh, we, have grow, uh, we have given the seedlings of tilapia fish. We have cultured monosex tilapia. And we have seen how they are growing. And uh, it is very good to see that on after four months, they reach the harvestable size of 100 gram to 150 gram per fish within a very short period because monosex tilapia grows very well. And their yes, tilapia is a highly resistant species, resistant to diseases, shows good growth rate. And uh, we can easily say that artificial tank culture of tilapia uh, under uh, our supervisors but gave, up, gave us a very good yield and opened the path and open the path of this tank culture in indoor tanks. This is definitely a very good, uh, you know, very good uh, step towards entrepreneurship. If, because in this COVID situation, not only really this COVID situation, because in this COVID situation, there's a lack of uh, jobs, obviously. 
and actually it leads to a lot of entrepreneurship scope because uh, people can construct this type of tanks in their households and can culture fishes but definitely what i already said they need a good expertise in that they need to learn the techniques and they can apply it so definitely as a startup business this fish culture in tanks either it is a rooftop tank or an indoor tank is not a problem but it definitely opens a avenue for livelihood now this is the capital cost i have shown here that how much money was invested in the uh, that is investment uh, how much was the investment this is the slide where i have seen the investment on construction how much it was done then uh, just a moment and the operational cost total it cost around 8 lakhs 71000 but after the after when we have done to it all the uh, uh, survival percentage then we can all see that so we can see that we are getting the income of 9 lakhs in the first year definitely in the second year also we are getting 16 lakhs so definitely after all the investments we can do a profit of 1 lakh so it is obviously a very good thing to share and to think about that we can think about this type of alternative livelihoods we can think about creating or establishing tanks uh, we can culture a lot of fish like uh, and we have to have a very good knowledge about that we the techno uh, we train the people all our uh, expertise are there so that uh, we can train them and uh, definitely as a startup business because banks also give them lo give loans and uh, as a startup business this particular artificial tank culture i think is a very good idea now with this i end my topic i extend my gratitude to techno india university and iic the institution innovation council for giving me an opportunity to speak in front of you and present my topic in front of you and to my supervisors dr rubitik pitro dr sufia zaman my team members Dr. Pushan Deep Pramani, Pavel Vishash, Dr. Nagunita Pal, Dr. Sourav Dotto, Dr. Rupita Shah, Dr. Pritam Mukherjee. Thank you all of them, and thanks all the participants for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you, madam. That was a wonderful talk, very enlightening, and I hope we all have learned something from that. And uh, Yes now i would like to open the floor for any question so if there is any question please go ahead or you can type in the chat box please type in the chat box for any questions the question answer is open now for all any questions relevant for this topic to dr pallavi datta dr pallavi you can share your email id to the participants so that Yes. 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 I am just asking that. I am sharing my email ID. If anyone has any question, they can directly mail me, and I will answer them. Yes. Uh, Madam, with your kind your, permission, I am just closing my video yes. because I can't. Yes. Ah, uh, because there is a problem with the net. I have to close my video, ma'am. Uh, do you give me permission to close my video? Yes, yes, I'm sure you can stop your. Thank video. you. One Thank question you. has come, Doctor. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. The yes. Yes. There is one yes, question. Ah, yes. uh, there is one question, yes. ma'am. So it is from Boni Broto Mondol. Yes. So, uh, he's uh, he's interested in the cost of bioflock tank setup. If you could please elaborate. Pallavi, madam, is it audible? Please, please uh, ask me the question. Okay, okay. The question from uh, Mr. Boni Broto Mondol is: uh, What is the cost for the bioflock tank setup? Okay.
disconnected i am getting disconnected please hold on i am getting disconnected i am Madam, we cannot hear you. We are waiting. Hello, can you hear me? Ye yes, madam, please. I think it will be around 1.5 lakh of establishing two tanks. I think so. But uh, okay, and the, uh, I think that is my opinion. And there's one more question from uh, him. He says that how many times you need oxygen circulation in a day in a bioflop tank? Okay, I think it is needed whole day. I, I think that. Okay, I hope uh, that answers Mr. Bonibrudo's questions. Are there any more questions from the uh, students that attend these? All the panelists, any questions for uh, Dr. Pallavi Datta? Okay, uh, yes, we have one more question in the chat box and it is from Mr. Mani Brother Mondal. He seems to be interested in your topic, madam. So he is also asking uh, the fish production in a bioflop tank. Pallavi, madam, can you hear us? I think she's again disconnected, I think so. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, participants, yeah. I would uh, like to request I, you all to please... I think, uh, uh, I think the participants were... Inter uh, can you hear now, Shoda? Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Please carry on. So if anybody has a question, please email me. Then I will get back to them. I think that's the yes, better. Yes, 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 yes. That was my uh, suggestion. Participants, please uh, email uh, uh, Pallavi, madam. The I think question. she is in a very uh, in a zone where there is very bad internet connectivity. Yes, absolutely. Okay, madam. There seems to be no more questions as of now. Okay. Thank you. So thank you, madam, for that lovely talk and for sharing all those insightful ideas. I hope all the attendees have a chock full of ideas right now so that they can also try something similar if they're interested and they will always contact you for some expert details. So uh, with that, I would like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Nabunita Mondo, uh, Nabunita, Nabunita Pal, Pal, sorry. Nabunita Pal, sorry, my bad. Nabunita Pal to deliver the Vote of thanks. So, uh, Dr. Nabodita, if you are online, please. The session uh, is handed you, over Dr. to you. I'm here. Uh, now I'm an, I'm, uh, I'm an audible. Yes, you're audible, Dr. Pal. Yes, Carry madam. On. Yes, madam. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dabda. Uh, congr uh, congratulations to all of you. It's an honor uh, to have been an ask to offer a vote of thanks on these memorable days. This is our webinar on starts up in artificial peace tank culture on 5th March 2022. Myself, Dr. Nabunta Pal, on behalf of the Tiffin University of West Bengal, I convey my regards and hearty thanks to Professor Dr. Gautam Raichadri, sir, Chancellor of Tiffin India University of West Bengal. My sincere thanks to Professor Dr. Manishu Raichadri, ma'am, co Chancellor of Tiffin India University of West Bengal. I may like to express our sincere thanks to Dr. Meghdoot Raichudri Sir and Pauline Ma'am for their support and cooperation in organizing this webinar. My heartiest thanks to Professor Dr. Gautam Shangupta Sir, Vice Chancellor of Techno India University of West Bengal. My special thanks to Director of Research uh, Sir, Professor Dr. Avijit Mitra Sir for his valuable contribution, guidance and encouragement in all our efforts. I would also like to thank our director, Dr. Rina Valladi, ma'am, for her unshinted support for this webinar. 
I express my uh, gratitude to Dean of Research, sir, Professor Dr. Ajay Chakraborty, sir, for his valuable contribution in this program. I also want to thank Mr. Ravi Ranjan, sir, and Dr. Helena Chandrakar, ma'am. My special thanks to our beloved HOD, ma'am, Professor Dr. Uh, Sufiya Zaman, ma'am, who is supporting us for this webinar uh, for a memorable success. I thank the I thank all distinguished invitees present here, accepting our um, the, accepting our invitations. I would like to uh, thank technical supporting team who working behind on the scene, uh, like uh, Kritika Ma'am, Mr. Shine, Mr. Shrilas, uh, Ms. Prama, for their help in making this very uh, arrangement. A thank to our special guest uh, speaker, Dr. Pallavi Datta, for her valuable lecture. I also uh, thank to uh, moderator in this webinar, Dr. Shorab Datta. I also want to thank all the colleges of our university for their cooperation um, in this uh, uh, webinar. And we are uh, fortunate to thank the decided uh, all uh, well motivated team of our university who have uh, aware of their uh, talks and are really uh, concerned about the research section. Now, once again, uh, Thanks all of you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dutta, and thank you, Dr. Uh, Zaman. Uh, thank you, Dr. Pallavi Dutta. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, Dr. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Namunita Paul. That was an amazing uh, ending to a beautiful uh, lecture session. So we have witnessed two wonderful uh, lecture sessions. So one was on the business model canvas, which we had yesterday. Dr. Shushanta Poddar enlightened us about uh, the various business model canvases and also how waste can be turned into wealth. So that was very insightful. And today we had a wonderful talk by Dr. Pallavi Datta on the startups in artificial fish tank culture, for which I think there are a lot of uh, participants who are interested and uh, they are all budding with ideas, uh, coming up with new ideas to develop such kind of systems. So thank you all for attending uh, this wonderful uh, webinar session today. And I would like to wish you all a very good evening and uh, you have a very good weekend ahead. So stay inspired and stay safe. Thank you all. And we'd like to end the session today. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Shorov. Thank you all for present here. Thank you students. Thank you the, all the participants, all the panelists in our team. Okay. See you again. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all.